Today I want to talk about some of the more advanced features of MuOS and why you would want to use it and some of the uh, shortcut keys. So let's get started. Uh, first, this is an RGB, uh, RG35XXH uh, running MuOS. Uh, the first great thing about MuOS is how fast it boots up, so let's do that. Hold down this button. You gotta let go for a second, which is a little strange, and then it lights up. But yeah, it's on. Look how fast that was. <clears throat> so, actually, let's just go into settings first. You can connect to your Wi-Fi network over there. Um, web services. I use Secure Shell a lot um, and SFTP, and that allows you to drop files onto your device wirelessly without having to take your SD card out and you can just basically go out of a folder, come back in and your files are there. So that's super useful. All right. Um, another thing I had trouble with was getting into and out of emulators. So I wanna show how that works. Um, so let's just pick um, GBC. All right, so This is easy. If you want to get out of here, just hold down the menu button and start together, and you're out. Um, let's go into Portmaster. Let's pick a game like, sure, that's fine. And that does not work in Portmaster. Oh, or does it? Uh, well, sometimes you have to push select and start together, <clears throat> but it seems like actually so was, um, menu and start seems to work on everything. So that's good to know, but sometimes it is select and start. <clears throat> um, another thing that is useful to know is changing out your emulator. So if you want to do that, push the select button. Right, so basically what it does is it defaults this folder to a specific emulator, and then anytime you open up something from this folder, it's always gonna use that same emulator. But if you want it to, um, well actually the first time you choose a folder, it's gonna ask you, and then it's gonna make that assumption the next time. But if you push the select button, um, guess what? You get to choose your emulator again. So I'm actually really happy with mine right now, and I don't remember what I chose anymore, so I'm probably just gonna cancel out of this but I believe I'm actually using an advanced emulator and I, I think it's MGBA or or the other, or VBAM, I forget which one of these two it is. Let's get out of here because we already did select our default. Okay, so that's um, really useful. Um, by default on this ROM on MuOS, there was a border um, that said Game Boy Advance that was covering over the um, the top and bottom of the screen. It looks great for advanced, it doesn't look good for this. Um, one of the things you could do is you could uh, use a Game Boy Color emulator, but I found that the advanced emulator works the best. I just wanted to get rid of the border. So how do you get into um, RetroArch settings, menu, and X? Here you are. Go down into on-screen overlay and disable it. Now. I have mine enabled for advance and disabled for color by default. So if you restart uh, the emulator and you just change that, you would actually come back. But mine, you'll see. Mine has the advance logo for, for this. And the reason why is that uh, there's a, I forget where it is. It's, um, there's a configuration file and you can basically specify each folder and what the default RetroArch setting is. It's somewhere in like slash mount slash info. Um, and you'll see a, a series of configuration files there pertaining to each one. So actually, well, let's go back in for a second. Menu up, go into... it core options so 
So you can see that uh, basically certain folders can default to a certain configuration um, file and it doesn't care about the path, it just cares about the final directory name. So you're going to see like if these are in, let's say, a folder called um, GBA or GBC, so you're going to see a configuration file called GBC and GBA accordingly. So that's how that works. Um, you just place that configuration file in the same directory as all the other ones, and if it has the name pertaining to the same name as your folder, uh, it'll use that config. So what I did is um, the default configuration file had a bottom border for the advance. Um, I basically took that out of the configuration file and used it for the GBA folder, but not for the GBC folder, and that's why the GBA has the bottom uh, little overlay. It says Game Boy Advance, which looks nice for advance because it's a wide screen and the border wasn't doing anything anyways, but for uh, color would actually be covering content. So that's what we did there. Um, DOS games, yes, DOS games work. Um, because of the way this works, every, um, you know, DOS games are in each in their own folder, but when you open up a, a folder for the first time, it's gonna ask you what you wanna use. Uh, so there are some weird oddities. So like if you go into Doom and you try to launch this, it doesn't actually work. Um, now you're stuck in DOSBox without a keyboard, so menu start will get you back out of here. If you launch this one, it also won't work for some reason. But there is a way to launch this uh, through setup. We go into setup. And save parameters and launch to hit start. And here you are. Works pretty well. Triggers can be used for shooting. Yeah, I mean, the default configuration is actually pretty good on here. Of course, I'm playing worse than I usually do when I'm trying to demo it, but enough of that. Alright, let's get out of here. Now, there are, of course, other ways to play Doom besides for playing them out of DOS, but I thought that was interesting. Um, there are I mean, Epic Pinball, this is such a great game. Um, they're, same problem, Epic Pinball. I couldn't launch pinball.exe. Um, this doesn't show extensions, so if you just hit pinball, they both don't work, but again, if you go into setup, exit and save. Uh, that will not launch anything, but it, but it will take you here. And from here, you can launch pinball. Oh, here we go. Who remembers this game? I have to say that the epic classic games are some of my fondest memories of all PC gaming. But this all works. So, that button, launch, and the two LR buttons for the clippers. This is working beautifully right out of the box. Okay. So, that? Ball comes down. See? Yeah, the flippers work just fine. Get out of here. Um, so yeah, DOS is working great. Uh, what didn't we go over yet? I guess Portmaster. So here's how you do Portmaster. You go into Applications. Actually, let's do one more thing before Portmaster. Just an honorable mention. I found this um, app somewhere. I was able to download it and load it onto my device. And this does box scraping. It shows box art for MuOS, which doesn't typically have it. It doesn't do a great job, but uh, and gets a lot of them wrong, but I guess it's better than nothing. Oh yeah, so you basically drop that zip onto your SD card, you load it in through Archive Manager. What else is on here that's useful? Uh, obviously, we're gonna talk about Portmaster, so let's do that. So, Portmaster has uh, basically, uh, typically PC games that have been ported over, and they run beautifully. And because they're not emulating, you can run really, uh, you know, great performance on, on consoles or, or games with detail level of graphics that would not typically be able to run on this device. So um, you would go into all ports if you want to see everything. Now, some of these now ready to run ports are ports that are able to just install and run. All ports includes everything. Now, 
Old parts may contain games that do not work out of the box. What that means is uh, just copyrighted content, so it's going to install the shell for you, but then you're going to have to go and, you know, buy the game, uh, get the game, and, and put the files, the data files, uh, onto the SD card for it to work properly. Or like I showed you through SFTP, if you enable the secure shell, so and then you can do that wirelessly. Now. Every game is going to have their own instructions, but typically it's um, each port has a uh, folder uh, under itself called game data, and that's where you place the uh, ports. So if you go to all ports, pretty simple. You can install whatever you want from here. You just hit A and then A again to install. Um, for the ones that are already installed, you go to manage ports and you can do updates here too. So if like, you click on something and you can do a reinstall, which I guess would do an update if there was a newer version. Okay. Enough of that. Let's go into the file browser. I wanted to show you what the file uh, configuration looks like on here. So applications. Oh, by the way, Moonlight allows you to stream games through from your PC. If you have an NVIDIA card, you can just stream them directly onto here. Haven't figured out how to exit the Moonlight app once, it's, once you're inside of it, but um, thankfully there's a reset button. I use that sometimes. Um, here, this is a file browser, Digi Digi Dinjix Commander. Launch it. It seems to stay stuck on the screen until you press A a second time, and here we are. Okay, so you're on your SD card. Well, actually, you're in your root directory, so let's talk about that. Mount, this is just how Linux file systems work. MMC is where the main primary card is, the left slot. That's where my stuff is. If you have a secondary card, those, those might be under SD card. I'm not sure. So, uh first card MMC now ROMs is where your you place all your ROMs uh, when you install things through Portmaster these are just launch scripts this is not the content of the game but this is what you would browse when you go to explore content to launch the game now I may have mentioned before you need to some for some of these games you need to like buy the game and put the actual content onto the uh, SD card so that doesn't happen in this rom slash ports directory that goes that's up a directory in the ports directory and so let me show you like a game like actually this is classic celeste but for regular celeste see game data that's where your your content would go uh same for well a ton of games this one i think the instructions again remember i mentioned that the instructions were are specific to each game i think this one said just place the data files in the main directory uh, Doom 3, oh, I don't know, but a lot of these games are going to have game data directories. Uh, that, that was my point of this. And for those, yep, here's another one. So those, the content actually open jazz. It doesn't work in game data. It works in the main directory. But most of these, the instructions are correct. Uh, and they go into game data for most of these. Hope I'm not missing anything else. I covered a lot of uh, tips and tricks about how to how to do stuff from here. You want to get out of here? Well, how do you get out of here? That seemed to work. I pressed both select and start and hit quit, and that got us out of the commander. I had a lot of trouble with DS getting out of that emulator. I'm still not sure I know how to do that, so I'm not going to show that off. But typically the way it works is the hotkey, right? Um, menu and start is going to work the same for any emulator that's using RetroArch. But if you're using the external emulator, so let me show you that, which I think works the best on DS, actually. So if you go to here, hit select, right, to select your DS um, emulator. Uh, Go up to Nintendo Game Boy Advance. These are not all internal to uh, to RetroArch. So the ones that are not, excuse me, um, I'm in the wrong place. I need to be a Nintendo DS. 
here we go, drastic is external, and these two are external. What that means is you're not going to have, you know, the typical menu shortcuts to get you into RetroArch settings as you do with, you know, the top two. And I actually heard really good things about Metal DS, including that it runs uh, DSiWare. So I'm going to try to get that working sometime, but for now, okay, so... With these, the shortcut keys are going to be different. That was that was my only point that I wanted to make. We got Pico 8, of course. Uh, that works pretty typically. Uh, for some reason, WAD files do not load directly from here, even though I selected. So we're going to go through this, right? Select. Right, we're going to choose our uh, launcher for this directory. We're going to choose Doom, right? PR Boom. So that means that when I load these, they should they should launch, uh, but they don't. But there is a way to launch these WAD files, besides for playing the DOS versions of them. Get out of here. Go to Applications. Go to RetroArch. So now instead of launching a game through RetroArch, you've launched RetroArch itself, and now you can just go to load contents. Whereas I mentioned before, they're in mount MMC or SD card if you're in the secondary card. Go into ports. Excuse me. You go into ROMs, Doom, that's where I, I had mine, or WAD actually. And this way, the, la the launch. So we tried launching Doom before, it didn't launch, but if you're in RetroArch and you select the WAD file, there you go. Great. Okay. That's all for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about how to do stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of time figuring all this out, so I wanted to make it easy for you. Thanks, and bye.